Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes from Maddie, fun little band from Lyon, France. Discovered them on a Cardiacs forum, Avant Prague, Math Rock, Free Jazz, and Zool are all appropriate descriptors. Or I guess apt descriptors. I don't know why I mentally swapped that word out. Uh, so we're going to be checking out the band Paul with the track Patashu. This is a live video of them. Looks like it's a trio. Let's dive into this and see what Paul is bringing to the table today. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure if I'm liking this. It's technically impressive and it's very fun. <laughs> Dude, the drum, the way that it explodes. <laughs> oh, that is a very playful hockey. It's growing on me. <laughs> that's a very that's like a muted harpsichord with like an electronic edge to it and slight modulation that is a fun sound In a silk button-down half shirt, just dudes oozing uh, personality, confidence. All right, just listen to this drumming. Beautiful, 
We've heard some noisy stuff from them previously, but this I think is their most dissonant. Okay, I was not expecting a pure groove rap rock thing. This drummer, dude, like... It's interesting to hear the callbacks. I, I wouldn't say that any of this is cyclical in any way. rhythmic shift here. Madness. Ridiculous amount of skill, of creativity, uh, experimentation, kind of playing outside the bounds of music. The interesting thing is, too, is I would definitely call this experimental, avant-garde, but it doesn't really bend the the rules of music too much honestly it gets very playful 
with music, but everything in here is pretty standard music theory. It's just pushed to, you know, the utmost limit of, of skill required to pull some of this stuff off. And I think that's that's where it stands out to me. It, it doesn't land every single section for me. It is a bit too chaotic at times. But, I mean, there is no way that I could do this. And It's not even going to be an analysis. I don't know that I understand this enough to analyze it and tell you what happened in it. It's going to be more of like a, a review, maybe even more like a traditional reaction here. Uh, but I'm, I'm not going to end this at all with any sort of negativity. Anything that uh, I think didn't work is a very subjective thing, especially given you know, art in general. It's pretty subjective, but it just this in a very specific vacuum. Yeah, it's so far outside the norm that I think most people are going to find it abrasive. And I say most people, I mean like everyone, not not this community. I think this community is going to be more receptive to it than most groups of people. But it's it's out there. It's it's not something easy to pick up. And uh, so, like I said, there's some parts not my cup of tea. It's a it's a very convoluted track, and I think it. You can get over some of those hurdles on multiple listens. Like I said, it started to win me over too. There is some, there's one key factor in here that I think ends up making it work for me in general, but it ends up also being a lot of a lot. And so I don't want to focus on any of the subjective elements that I don't think worked because this is definitely not a band going for a mainstream sound. <laughs> They're, they're pushing the boundaries. They're bending the limits. There's no point in, I think, talking about how I would have preferred something safer. That's not what they're doing at all. <laughs> so there is one thing, though, like I said, that I think just really works for this. And, and without this component, I think this song would have bounced off of me completely. This song is freaking fun, man. Like... There's so many parts to it that just put a stupid grin on my face. It's not even that they're like it's traditionally well written or anything like that. It's just ideas that kind of come out of nowhere. They're kind of nonsensical and almost bordering on like rule of cool stupidity. But they're just cool enough and unexpected. I'm like, oh. Yeah, dang, I can get behind that. It's wild, it's eclectic, sure, but they pull it off with such pizzazz, and you just have to give them credit for that. There's, it's not even like, it's not even like me extended appreciation for something I don't get. They legitimately had me smiling through at least half of this track as they pull some weird thing out of the bag that absolutely works and isn't just uh, technically impressive but is also just it looks like it's very fun to play and a lot of the times this ended up being the vocal hockets in fact most of the time that there's a hocket it's it's very fun uh, and for those who aren't aware a hocket is when you have a single musical idea split and chopped up into smaller pieces that are divvied to different instruments or in this case usually vocalists it's where all three of the vocalists are making sounds with uh, different rhythmic phrasings but when they all come when, when you hear them all as a whole it makes sense you get that full melodic flow out of it um, and we hear that all over the place on this and it's it's so good like just the sonic part of it, listening to it happen. It's fun. It's just childlike fun. It's three people making the, the, I don't know if this is a real language or not. I did preemptively try to find lyrics just to have the tab open and they don't have any on their band camp. I think they're too small for genius, but the requester mentioned uh, Zool, and I think a lot of Zool-related groups 
make up languages. So I don't know if this is French or a made up language, but either way, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, at least to me, they just sound like random syllables and they're just firing off at, and, and it just sounds so good. And the, you know what it is too? It's not just the performance side of it, which is impressive too, but also the production, the placement of all these instruments. But I think the key to all of this, what gives it the fun energy rather than the, oh, that's technically interesting because it is really difficult to pull this off. <laughs> But what makes it fun is the speed. I really think that's the key ingredient here, which turns it from a, a sort of like a professional uh, interest. What is that word I want? Uh, a professional appreciation, maybe like what I have with with Haken. I don't always like the music that they create, but I can honestly tell it's played at such a high level and the compositions are, are written at such a high level. This is just really great music, even if I don't connect with it. And so uh, professional technicality might be the word that I want. Um, and this song, if it were slowed down, I think I would be in that, mm, it's technically proficient, very well done, difficult to play, but because they bump up that speed to, to such a level, it comes off as more fun and playful than rigid and, and static. I think part of it too is just the, the passion and intensity. That It's not just focusing on the delivery of these syllables, but the impact of them. Uh, there is a, a heavy P at the beginning of some of these. It's a very plosive sound, and they really lean into that, not trying to lighten it up at all. It's just puh, 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 just really getting a like a, a fun sound out of it. It isn't puh, 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 it's puh, puh, puh. It's, it's, got, it's got characteristic, it's, it's, it's unique. It's uh. I don't know, man. Like I said, I, explaining this song's tough. I'm trying to get as much as what I felt conveyed. Um, and this is just a, a big component. This is where things really click with me is, is the hockets with character and delivery and intensity. And it's also difficult to do. So like it all comes together in those moments. And we do have instrument hocket as well. Uh, we see a little bit of that with the keyboard and bass playing. The drums are just... Well, let's go to the drums for a second. The drums are in a, a league of their own. This drummer, like, where did he come from? This is the kind of drummer you expect to see in, like, a top-tier, high-quality, well-known metal band. Not, not this little group with 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. And... Uh, I mean, on well, they have they have a few sales on on Bandcamp. I don't know what their Spotify numbers are, but regardless, they they just they don't seem as big as they should be given the skill. I think any progressive rock or metal band would kill to have this drummer. Um, actually, it'd kill to have any of them. They're all very creative, but I honestly think most progressive rock bands would hold these people back they need the the limitlessness of this group i think in order to feel uh oh, man why can't i think of words today anyways to feel good about their output musically artistically uh but yeah dude this drummer he is he keeps the rhythm somehow in all of this chaos. And and I say somehow because it, none of it really feels rhythmically oriented. A lot of it is melodic. If the bass is going... The bass is going down the toms. Really playing along with what everyone else is doing melodically. Link, uh, uh, viewing all the pieces of the drum kit as different notes to be played on this instrument rather than, you know, the cymbals, what I use for light timekeeping, and the bass and the bass kick and the snare, what I use for backbeats and, and, uh, syncopation 
and the toms are what I use. They're like they're not role based. They have notes, and the drummer knows how to use them to create melodies to play alongside and sometimes run in counterpoint to what the other instruments are doing. Wall also, despite playing this melodically, keeping a sense of time, they are still the metronome of the band. They're still the backbeat, and somehow in all of this melodic playing, they're still keeping a backbeat they're still the metronome they're still the heartbeat of the band but they're also playing at such a ridiculous speed and uh, i mean just watching him too the the few times that the camera cut over to what the drummer was doing during some of these intense moments um, it's just like the dude could honestly have used two more limbs i think all the times that he's he's got to like cross hands to like get stuff in the right order and it's just it's impressive to watch also the way that he controls time i had mentioned this at the beginning but the burstiness of it and moving from like these slower ideas to these faster ones back to the slower ones and really controlling the flow of the song it is just impressive it is enthralling it is captivating like it it, it just it is both visually and sonically impressive, but also technically impressive. And it just, it captures this middle point. Because there is there can really be music that is technically impressive, but kind of boring or sterile. Um, and I think this drummer captures a, a midpoint there, where it is technical, it is difficult to play and wildly obtuse and very different from most from how most people drum but still captures something that i think it, anybody who is open-minded enough about music can kind of be ensnared by just kind of get locked into what is this drummer doing just like you can't look away how are they doing this and it just rocks your world that's the drummer to me anyways just an absolute beast. Like I said, though, the drummer isn't the only one here. Everybody is equally skilled, I think. And the keyboard player absolutely shows off. Uh, I think less dynamic and exploratory than the drummer is rhythmically. The keyboardist loves to play eighth notes and sixteenth notes and kind of sticks with those. Going with uh, the eighth notes most of the time, bursting into sixteenth notes, coming back down to the eighth notes. Generally, though, the keyboardist plays quickly through almost all of the song. Where I think that the, the keyboardist shines, though, is in harmonic exploration. They're all over the place. I don't even know what to call this song, atmospherically or emotionally. It's it kind of bonkers. All of the different textures and atmospheres that it creates harmonically with its chords... Sometimes it's dissonant. Sometimes it almost feels microtonal. Um, there's multiple sections where he is playing the same idea on both hands, just separated by you know an octave or so. And the harmonies created in these dyads are very wonky. <laughs> I think would be the the technical music theory term for it. Um, in that they 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 feel dissonant. But they also feel consonant. And I don't know how that works. It feels like it shouldn't work. Which is why I mentioned it kind of feels microtonal. But it obviously isn't. We're still looking at a standard keyboard here. We're still looking at a 12 note scale. So. I I don't. I don't know, but listening to this guy slip into and out of different uh, chords and and I don't know modes even it's just constantly flipping around everywhere. It almost feels chromatic at times, but it never quite has that chromatic openness. Chromatic has a very specific feeling to it, and he avoids it while also never really leaning towards anything else. No major, no no Phrygian, no minor. It's like none of the other flavors really stand out either. It isn't happy. It isn't sad. It isn't sorrowful or angry or vast or awesome or melancholic pensive it's sort of everything simultaneously and it's just it's mind-blowing 
it's it's impossible i think to really pin down an emotive element to this song and pretty much all of that comes from the keyboardist and that brings us to the bassist and a majority of the time that i was listening to the bass because honestly the other two guys were just blowing my mind left and right and the song moves at such a pace it's tough to keep track of what everyone's doing in every section but a lot of the times I tuned into the bass, they were a bit more foundational. Everyone else is going crazy, so the bass is just holding holding the house down, holding the fort down kind of idea. Playing uh, some simpler ideas and kind of being the foundation for all the other chaos. But there were a couple of times, once in the middle of the song and definitely towards the end of the track, when the bassist is going off. Constant 16th notes playing all over the bass, all over the neck, going up and down, all four strings. Uh, it was just absolutely shredding. And then, of course, getting a bit creative there at the end, playing the strings past the... I don't know what the thing's called. Um, it's past the bridge, though, and it's uh, like a little area that holds the strings before it goes uh, into where the strings are held inside the body. I don't know, playing back there though, and creating a very chirpy sound that is then modified by all the effects on it and stuff, and, ah, dude, he's, he's on another level too, man, it's, it's just bonkers, like I said, a little less so, but the, the chops are there, this song might not have shown it off as much as maybe some others, but he, and you know what it kind of reminds me of, all of it? The uh, the wild timiness of it, although I really think most of it sits in 4-4 and there are some really groovy sections that are definitely 4-4 and it's really nice to get to those <laughs> after some more chaotic moments. You find something that's just a little more easy to digest and groove to, kind of, you know, let your brain not be soup for a second. Where is I going with all this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the wild ideas and antics and, and chops put on display, but in sort of a fun way. It reminds me of a more experimental animals as leaders. I kind of like that. Less focus on traditional sound and more on avant-garde. Still pushing things in, in a unique perspective, getting away from typical rhythms and harmony. Um, and technique even some of those I mean dang all three of those guys and animals as leaders they're, they're they're also leading the pack in in their instruments but they aim for something a bit more palatable a little bit more closer to uh, the, the traditional sound of what music is these three are like ah we don't care we're going to the extents of things and like I said a bit more of an avant-garde animals as leaders with an extra layer of having to play all these complex things while also singing complex things and just I don't know man how do you perform that honestly that's just too much stuff to keep track of for me anyways I was always more of a one instrument kind of person or let me play chords and I'll sing on top of that if you need me to backup vocals i was never good enough to be a lead singer but yeah I'm trying to imagine especially the drummer doing all the bonker stuff they're doing on drums and then also singing complex polyrhythms against what he's playing on drums i don't know man this this just blew my mind there's no lyrics i have no interpretation of this it's it's chaos bottled into sonic release it's fun, it's crazy, it's groovy, it's technically impressive. It's a lot of a lot. Some sections didn't quite work for me, but on the whole, I mean... Dang. It's a good word to wrap this up. Those are my thoughts on Poise uh, Pata Show. What did you think of this? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything that... You'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on. Maybe you just heard something I didn't. It's not unlikely. There's a lot of stuff in here to hear. <laughs> I definitely didn't catch it all. Uh, maybe you have an interpretation of all of it. 
let me know. Put that stuff down in the comments. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support, cha the, support the channel. This song melted my brain. <laughs> There's a link to the Discord server in there, too. A bunch of other stuff. Go ahead and check it out. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. And sorry, 10 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.